Hey, I'm coming to all of you live right now from the Worth Writer Gallery that is currently in the Art Practice and Anthropology Building at UC Berkeley. Just want to say welcome to folks who are joining me. I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the project that I created for the first year MFA show. Um, our show is called Quote Unquote, and the quotes are very important. Um, when things get back to normal. Hey, hi everyone. So good to see you all. Thank you for joining. Yeah, I'm so, so excited to share about the art that um, we've all made. I really want to encourage people to go on our website. The link is in my bio if you haven't had a chance to see our virtual exhibition. I feel so blessed to be a part of this cohort. Um, there are some really incredible artists who are making work that's really profound and uh, I'm just so thrilled that, you know, next Friday, which I think is the 19th, from 6 to 7, we're going to have an artist panel, and we're also going to be having some performances and also some um, video screenings, and we can talk, we're going to be talking more about our artwork and also what this process has been like um, to work, you know, during this time, during this pandemic. And that's definitely a big thing that I think a lot of us as artists have been exploring and thinking about because it's definitely, you know, intense to be making work during these times and we're um, all, you know, mostly on Zoom, um, having to be, um, yeah, thinking about creating and documenting our work and sharing our work. Um, and so, for example, I'm the only person inside this gallery right now, <laughs> um, and there are very few people actually um, on campus at Berkeley. Um, oh, hi. Thank you. Please send my love to Berlin. So good to see you here. Um, yeah. And so, you know, in this space right now, like, um, there are actually two artists, uh, myself and another artist, and in this space, and then there's an adjacent space where we have another artist who's has installed work. Um, and, you know, I'm definitely um, glad that, like, more people can see our art and can go on our website to uh, see what we've been working on. So, again, I have a link in my bio so you can go see that whole website. And you can also see this installation that I'm about to show you all. And um, so I want to talk about, you know, before I go into the installation, I want to share a little bit about what my process was like. So um, I was still living in Oklahoma when I started working on this project. And um, I had been wanting to work on kind of exploring, uh, you know, live stream media and also digital media. And as many of you know, I like, I love working with plants. I love working with magic. And um, Nicole is someone who asked me about divination. And I think divination is a really powerful way to think about my work um, over at Seedling Spiritual. I hope you're here. Hi. Um, yeah, I think, you know, divination is definitely something that I love to share as a big part of my practice. Um, I actually offer workshops on divination for artists. And this whole workshop um, was definitely inspired by divinatory practices and also by plant magic. Hey, Diana, so good to see you here. Diana is one of the people that I collaborated with. And so as part of this process, I was um, I received an email from Professor David Shorter at UCLA who asked me if I would be interested in doing a community learning project with his class. And um, as part of that, you know, I ended up having the profound honor of working with three different um, students over at UCLA. And uh, we spent time connecting. We would connect about once a week. And we would uh, kind of share our intentions. And I shared that I wanted to create some artwork with them, and that I also wanted to have them experience a workshop that I led um, that we could all share together that would inspire all of our work. And so this workshop, um, if you, I'll show a little bit of, of that at the end, but you can see the entirety on my YouTube channel. And it's also through the website that you can access um, in this space. And so I'll show a little bit of that at the end. Um, but I'm actually really excited to show you some of the work. And since Diana's here, I want to start with her because I'm like 
just in love with the project that she did. So he, let me switch the camera around. Okay. So we're gonna be starting here. This is kind of at the entrance and I'll kind of show you what it looks like as you're entering this space. There's like a blue light that you can kind of see off in the corner. And you walk in here and just like so in awe of this magical piece made by Diana Castro, who is here. And I'd love to invite her in a second to share about this work. I just want to give people a close up so you can just see how gorgeous this is. Okay, so Diana, if you're here, I'd love to invite you um, to come on and talk about this piece. It's called Heritage. Um, definitely send me a request and we can both share and talk a little bit about um, our work together and how we um, created this um, in collaboration, you know, at a distance through Zoom and through YouTube and through different ways. Yes, I love that stitch witchery, <laughs> definitely. Oh, I see you, hey Diana. So um, yeah, Diana, if you could send me a request, I think oh, I'm gonna send you one. Hey. hey, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for having me. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I hope you can see the many people who are, you know, giving some love to your work and yes, just thank you so much. Yeah, so I'd love for you to share what your what it was like for you to work, you know, on this project, and also if you want to share about heritage, about this piece, and also I love what you're wearing too. <laughs> oh yeah, I made these earrings actually. So oh, those are amazing. Yeah, oh, I don't know if you have your ears pierced, but you know, I can send you some. <laughs> I don't, but I could, maybe. <laughs> okay, I'll look into clip-ons. Yes, yeah, so yeah, do you want to share a little bit about yourself and maybe share a little bit about this process of working together? Yeah, so um, I'm a fourth-year UCLA student, and I'm also an artist. I like to do art that's based on my identity as Peruvian American, um, and just really like connect to my heritage through art and also to connect with in that way I also connect with my ancestors and my transistors and everything so um it's it's really important uh it's really important for me to do art that's meaningful healing and that you know makes an impact in the world Right. Um, so this piece is actually a mixture of a Peruvian retablo and um, an arpillera. And arpilleras were used um, traditionally by indigenous women uh, during the times of dictatorship as a way for us to like use self-expression and um, try to resist through art. And then retablos are like little, are like altar pieces where you in the middle you put images of of what you're trying to honor and usually there there used to be like um catholic imagery but a lot of indigenous artists have reclaimed it um to honor the the land that uh they live on and everything so that's right. why i decided to do an altar to my heritage uh which is you know the you know, Peru, the, the natural landscape. Um, and uh, those flowers, I learned to embroider them when I was living in Peru uh, when I was 14, I think. So to be able to go back to doing that practice uh, was very healing for me. And um, just a simple act of embroidering uh, felt like resilience because I felt like my ancestors were living through me. Um, mm -hmm when they when they uh and like guiding me to do what felt right so that's a little bit about my piece and i'm really glad you all liked it 
Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, so powerful. And yeah, I'm seeing these beautiful comments here from folks who are really excited um, by what you were just saying. I definitely feel like you really invited in the ancestral um, energy into this space and um, really honored to have this at the entrance of, you know, as you walk into this installation. And really, I'm grateful for the intention that you put into this piece. I think it's so powerful for you to, as you're saying, kind of collaborate with your ancestors and to have them move through you as you work in this practice. I, you know, as you're saying, it's connected to your, your people and also connected to them as well. And so, yeah, I'd love for you to share. I know you collaborated with a couple of plants. Do you want to share a little bit about the plants that you worked with? Um, so actually, during your workshop, uh, I really uh, communed with uh, maize morado uh, that grows in the Peruvian Andes. It's like purple corn. Uh, and I have some. So I was just holding it in my hand during the, the ritual that you were doing with us. And so the corn started to send me images of, of Peru, of like memories of like the earth that were mine and also that weren't mine. Um, mm -hmm. And it was just a really powerful experience and a wave of nostalgia like went over me and I just kind of let it pass through my body and just, you know, accept it. And, and um, it was, it, and then I started like singing a little bit. Uh, it wasn't like a song with words, it was just music uh to kind of help with uh with all those feelings and images that were going through my body as as i communed uh with the corn so it was a really powerful experience and thank you edgar for facilitating that space that allowed me to to have that experience in the first place i feel like that was really the birth of that um piece that is now in your gallery uh, wow, thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, and you know, for people that maybe are wondering um, what Diana is talking about, um, as part of this process, I created a workshop that was on plant divination and connecting with our plant kin and collaborating with them. And part of, I think, part of my practice, you know, um, I had a question from Nicole about divination, and I feel like I really want to validate that so many artists use altered states to kind of allow work to move through them, allow ancestors to communicate, to receive messages from different collaborators. And so I definitely feel like I'm um, just so in awe of what came through and you shared a song. And so um, if you're open to it, I'd love to share a little bit of our song that we kind of worked on together. Yes, that would be amazing. I'd love, I'd love to, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna walk over there and so, um, during our time working together, we worked on um, a song with artist uh, and musician Joshua Hill. And um, the way we worked was again at a distance. And we um, actually um, ended up kind of sending each other music. And as Diana was saying during ceremony, there was like sounds that came through. And so Diana sent over some words, really profound lyrics that um, came through um, in, in kind of response to the music that Joshua Hill sent. And then um, I was so inspired by the lyrics that I ended up kind of creating a song also. And so I wanted to share this song. Um, and so for folks, here, I'm gonna switch. There's a website that you can access. And I was also working with coding and this is like a new kind of technology and that I like, I'm, you know, still very much in my own infancy in. If people are wanting to look at this website, I highly recommend you see it on um, a computer because it's like not that ideal on phones, but you can still see it on a phone. But I wanna share, so if you click on the, the um, Hikuri or Peyote, So this is a song that we worked on together. Um,
Yeah, uh, <laughs> so grateful to you for, for these lyrics. Oh my goodness. Um, if you want to hear the whole song, I definitely recommend checking out the website. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, your lyrics moved me so much. And you know, there was a day where I was like, just kind of connecting with them. And I was like, I need to just like channel this. Like in the same way that you were saying, yeah, like my ancestors were like, this needs to move through your body. Yeah. And I'm just so grateful to you that you're open to us collaborating in that way. Um, and also, uh, you know, want to name that there's another song that those same lyrics show up in um, that's called El Baile de los Insectos that I'll probably show a little bit later. Um, that is definitely, you know, kind of thinking of the different ways that we can connect and collaborate and kind of, especially during these times, right, where it's definitely been challenging to think of ways to be creative and also to connect with each other. And I think as you've brought up, Diana, you know, we can be connected beyond time and space, right? We can find ways to collaborate, to connect, and to work with each other. And yeah, so um, again, thank you so much. And I would love it if you want to just uh, share if people want to see some of your artwork or if people want to connect with you, how they can connect with you. Yeah, of course. Uh, you can message me on Instagram. I'm going to drop my at. Um, and, I, you know, I, I love to collaborate with people. Uh, I love to make art and earrings and everything in between uh, so yeah just you know uh, if you want to hear more about my upcoming projects because I'm also doing several projects um, for my senior uh, capstone project at UCLA just uh, let me know I'd love to connect with you uh, and share thoughts ideas creativities and visions yes Yes, definitely follow Diana. Um, so much, so much amazing work that you're doing. Yeah, and again, such an honor to collaborate with you. Thank you so much for kind of being open to working with me and to kind of bringing in so much of your genius into this incredible, incredible work that you've shared. And I'm Thank so grateful. Thank you so much. It's, yeah. it's been an honor, honestly. I've learned so much and grown so much as a person. And I'm just really thankful for for this opportunity to collaborate with you in so many meaningful ways. Oh, thank you so much, Diana. Yeah, and I appreciate you being open to jumping on this live stream too. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day and so excited to stay connected and to seeing all the magic that you have working on. Yeah, thank you. Um, yourself. All right, bye. Yeah. Bye. Okay, so. I am so excited to kind of keep going and showing um, a couple of other pieces. Uh, for example, Brendan Monroe uh, Thompson worked on this beautiful zine called Taking Care. And it was again also made in as part of the uh, workshop that we did together. And you can actually um, get this zine as a PDF and download it. And there's like a video that shows you how to make it. And Brendan shared about his experience of working on um, the, the working as part of the um, collaboration with um, as you could see here, there was a plant that he worked with that, um, you know, he wanted to really take care of, but wasn't able to. And so he talks about his process of uh, la pobre plantita, as you can see right here. <laughs> so it ended up looking like, and so, he, you know, talking about death and loss and failure, I think are really important things to talk about as artists. And um, Brendan really goes into that in this zine, and so I definitely recommend if you all are interested in looking at this zine, um, downloading it online, and you could again build it for yourself. So um, this is here also in the space, and it was such an honor to collaborate with Brendan, and Brendan is also doing amazing work, and I'm going to be tagging him. Um, when I post this video so people can also follow some of the work that he's doing um, in Los Angeles. And yeah, so as part of the um, 
workshop, I also connected with uh, Potato and Bougainvillea, and I spent some time during that ceremony playing with some um, digital making work. Uh, like, for example, I, for the first time, started working with Illustrator, and I started to create this here digitally. And what I ended up doing as part of the installation is I created a curtain that I've placed on some concrete and in some buckets with some rocks, some lava rocks. And there are some, there's some yarn and these are copper tubing. And they're all placed here on this tarp. And again, so I made this again in collaboration with Bougainvillea, with Potato, um, in ceremony. And I made these live. And you can see the process of that. Again, if you look at the Spontaneous Communion workshop that's on my YouTube or that you can access through the website. And it felt really important for me to have like physical art because a lot of my work was digital. And I think as an artist, I'm really pushing myself to create more things with my hands. And of course, also being on Zoom, being online so much, I've been wanting opportunities to create um, physical objects. And so another part of what I created was behind me, as you can see, there's, I made a mural that I, saying it was in collaboration with yerba mate <laughs> so i was drinking some yerba mate when i made this mural so again i think it is in conversation with this curtain piece so i'm gonna turn around so you could see this mural so this is made with spray paint and it was my first time ever actually working with spray paint I think um, a lot of us artists are really trying to push ourselves here um, in our program to try new mediums and to experiment and to also show our process. I think that's something that's felt really important for me as an artist is to talk about process and to talk about how, you know, many times when we're creating, yeah, there can be many iterations or things can sometimes feel like their failures, but they're really portals opening up into other spaces. Just giving you a little bit of detail here. Yeah, and so, you know, something I think that I can share here is drawing and painting have not been my forte as an artist. And I feel like um, I have maybe self-limited <laughs> how much I've worked with those mediums. And it's been really fun <laughs> to draw and to allow myself to paint. Um, I think it can be really powerful for us to not feel like we have to be quote unquote good at stuff in order to do it. Um, because art can be so therapeutic and it can also be a sanctuary for us to really help us. And I would say like a big part of my practice is therapy for myself. And I know that connecting with other people is therapy. Also being in ceremony is therapy. Connecting with plants is therapy. And so, I'm so grateful to the people who've collaborated with me, to Joshua Hill, to Diana Castro, to Brendan Thompson, um, Jordan Goheen, for helping me with this process and for being open to collaborating and connecting on, you know, and also just being open to the unknown. Because when I first started this project, I wasn't really 100% sure what it would look like. And 
Um, I think it's really great for artists to be open to see where the process takes us. So with that said, I want to share a little bit more about this website that I made. Again, another like new medium that I'm exploring. I made all of this with code and you can see this um, if you click on inside the installation, you could go into this website and there are many different videos and I'll share a couple. So the first one, if you click on the cloud, you see it'll take you to a YouTube video. And this video uh, shares, it's our first meeting that we ever had together um, as you know, kind of our first community learning meeting. And we talk about like our intentions and I share with kind of what I'm hoping to get out of our work together. So if you wanna watch that, again, I said, like I said, it's on my YouTube. Or you could access it in here. And then I made this as an animation to represent Tattavari. So, So I want to thank Jordan Goheen for that moment. <laughs> Jordan Goheen is uh, a poet um, who wrote this piece in response to working with bamboo. And it is placed next to music created by artist and musician Joshua Hill. And I've made this animation to respond with the piece. So again, also the poem is here in the space. Okay, thank you so much for that. I, that was so beautiful to experience again. And so I'm gonna click on another element here in the website that I wanted to share.
This is an image of Kayumari, who is a sacred deer deity that's been made using code. Uh, I think it's all CSS code. So I'll back up a little bit so you can see it fully. Yes, the stag. Yeah, so different experiments that I created. And then again, on this website here, you could see where it says spontaneous communion. There's a link where you could watch some of the ceremony that we had together. So this was live stream on YouTube when it happened and it's still on my YouTube channel. And to share, there I am working with Potato. And again, that work with Potato ended up becoming this piece here. I made this piece in collaboration with Potato and Bougainvillea as part of this ceremony Again, you can watch the entirety of the ceremony on my YouTube, or it's also accessible here on this website. And you can access all of this by going onto when things get back to normal.net. And so if you click on the flower, we have this beautiful alien landscape. And I placed a little bit of sound from um, a Zoom conversation I had with artist Joshua Hill. Yeah, so I just wanted to talk about a couple of things that I just said in that. Um, yeah, so, you know, I think a lot of my artwork uh, is very emergent. You know, part of this process, I was so grateful that Professor David Shorter reached out and wanted me to work with his students. And then during this process, I had, you know, mentioned, uh, hey, Lex, hey, Angela, hey, Esther, so good to see you all here still. Um, yeah, so um, during this process, Joshua Hill reached out and asked me if I wanted to work on some music. And I had already mentioned to the students uh, that I wanted to work on music. So I felt like it was a divine synchronicity of things coming together. And I'm definitely an emergent witch, <laughs> an emergent artist who loves to, um, really conjure and think about ways that art is already happening in our lives and wanting to come through our lives. And also, as I said in you know, that what I just showed, I really allowed myself to create things that felt fun. I think I wanted to um, kind of work on projects that felt interesting or felt exciting, especially you know, needing some self-care during this time you know, that we've all been experiencing. So I'll share a couple more pieces here from this website. As I shared this peyote earlier. And I'll click on the corn. So you can see the objects kind of run away from you a little bit. <laughs> and so this is, I would say, like the main piece. Yeah, very Gemini. <laughs> it's 
it's very Gemini. It's all over the place. I, you know, I think editing is definitely something that is a big part of my work because there's so much that I want to do. And so this is, I would say, like the, <clears throat> the piece that really shows our process and product in many ways. Um, it's a piece that I made with uh, Joshua Hill and also with Brendan um, Thompson and with Diana Castro. And I, it's, a, it's, it's pretty long. And again, it's on my YouTube channel. It's called El Baile de los Insectos or Dance of the Insects. And I'll just play a little bit of it so folks can get a sense of it. Okay, so <laughs> if you want to watch the whole video, that's on, again, on my YouTube channel. It's also accessible if you go into my installation on the main website. Yes, that was um, Diana in the background and Jordan and myself, and all of that was done in collaboration with Joshua Hill. And then I made this video piece. Again, I would say that video piece is definitely, um, you know, I'm... So grateful to hear all these wonderful comments from people. Um, please, yes. <laughs> yeah, please, if you're interested, go watch the video on um, my YouTube channel. 
Uh, it's a beautiful collaboration, again, done on Zoom, done at a distance, uh, sending files back and forth to each other. Uh, it's just a really powerful way that we can stay connected and collaborate through time and space. And that's a big thing that I've been really excited about with this whole entire project was that we, I was able to work on it um, at a distance um, through these platforms that we have. And again, I'm sharing about it through one of these platforms. So just so grateful that we can find ways to stay connected. And so I'm going to just kind of do just to kind of show the whole space again, especially if I see a couple of wonderful folks here. So here's the YouTube video that we were just watching. And I'll show you the website, what it looks like on there. And so you can access this main website by going to whenthingsgetbacktonormal.net and it's inside the installation of mine. And again, I coded all of this together. I've been really, as you all know, working those digital realms, trying to figure out um, different technologies that I'm you know, really excited to connect with. And so this is the last piece I'm gonna show from the website. This also has some of the Ana Castro's words in here. You'll hear her voice come up in a second. Lost. Yes, coding witch. <laughs> Hoping I can find. So inside the space, there's actually like a key in there somewhere, but for some reason I couldn't get it to come out. Um, but for those of you who just heard the Anna Castro's words, I just want to share kind of what, um, you know, I ended up kind of working with those words because I found them so inspiring. We shared about this a little earlier, but just for those of you who just joined us. And we ended up creating another song together that's also on the website. So again, if you all want to hear that, highly recommend it or watch it earlier in this video. Um, yeah, so again, just showing the space here. I'm inside the Worth Writer Art Gallery and that is at UC Berkeley and the Art Practice and Anthropology Building. So these are pieces that I created. These are, this is a piece that I made as part of a workshop and I made this here as part of this installation. Yeah, thank you so much. So good to see you, Rachel Ann. Hey, Francisco, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining and for being a part of this walkthrough. I'm just so grateful to all of you for your support and for, yeah, just being here on this live stream just so excited to be able to share this work in this way with all of you and so grateful for all your beautiful comments. Thank you all so much. Yeah, there's just so much in this space. I think I'm just, yeah, please take your time, enjoy it, explore it. There's just so much going on. There are little pieces or little hidden things on the website. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Just so grateful that I can share this with all of you and wanted to again mention that next Friday from 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we're going to be having an artist panel with also some performances, some video art, and it's going to be facilitated by Farley Gwazda, who's the director here at the Worth Writer Art Gallery here at UC Berkeley. 
Yeah, thank you all so much for being here. Um, yeah, and definitely gonna stick around here for a couple more seconds if people have any questions. Again, wanted to kind of bring up, I spoke about this earlier, but I loved the question around divination and I love working with divination in altered states. I think it's really sacred to be able to work in altered states with other people and to be able to work creatively with altered states and to work creatively in collaboration with our divine plant kin. And that was a big also part of this work is I love working with plants and I wanna just encourage other artists to work with plants. Oh, and there's Joshua. Hey, Joshua, so good to see you here. I was sharing our amazing work that we did together. Hey, um, and shared a little bit of our piece, El Baile de los Insectos. Um, people were really into it. And so again, recommend if you want to um, check out um, the video, it's on my YouTube channel. And also highly recommend you check out some of the incredible music and art that Joshua Hill creates that's linked through the website also. Um, yeah, and thank you so much for joining me again. Just going to do one last kind of pan to show the space again. Welcoming any last questions or comments. This has been so lovely to have this time with all of you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. So appreciate your comments. Again, if you wanna have your own copy of the zine, you could download it off the website, off when things get back to normal.net. If you want to look at these pieces more close up, there's also photos on there. Yeah, there's a gallery. And yeah, thank you all so much for sharing this time with me. Ooh, I love that, yes. Bless our ancestors, our queer ancestors, our trans ancestors for all their guidance and support in the work that we do. And yeah, thank you to all the living ancestors who are making work at this moment and who are channeling all the voices of our sacred, our sacred, sacred ancestors and our sacred plant kin. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, when things get back to normal.net. Yeah, and we definitely, I want to, you know, just share a little bit about that name. You know, we really, um, we're talking a lot about, yeah, how for us, it's our first year in the MFA program. It's been fully virtual this entire time. And we've heard that phrase a few times, you know, in school, outside of school of when things get back to normal, when things get back to normal. And yeah, we wanted to really kind of play with that notion. What does that mean? Kind of question that notion and, and really think about what is normalcy during these times and knowing that we're still living, we're still needing to find ways to process and to create and to connect and to really, yeah, be able to still work and also rest and heal. This is, oh, thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> yes. So appreciate you saying that. I, I am so honored to be a living ancestor and you are a living ancestor too. And thank you so much for saying that. Um, just, yeah, really appreciate you. Yes, no normal, we are transitioning. Thank you so much for that, um, Joy. New paradigm, praise. <laughs> yeah, and I think that is like a big message too, is that we're creating another dimension. We are creating with our ancestors. We are connecting with the earth. And I really feel a big part of my practice is sharing my love of plants, sharing my love of communion, of sacred communion with our plant kin and really encouraging people to tap into the medicine of animism, knowing that our ancestors all kind of knew the power, the beautiful collaborative medicine of animism and you know, plants and animals are out here to collaborate with us. And we also, of course, um, are their you know, living ancestors. And so that I think um, 
yeah, that's definitely something that's really central to my practice and also um, to teaching and to connecting with people. So it's been a joy to be able to connect with other people and to guide them towards animistic practices of connecting with our plant kin. And look at what comes out, zines, music, tapestries, poetry, our plant kin are really wanting to encourage us to create and to connect. And it's so amazing that we have platforms and digital spaces for us to facilitate that during this time. Oh, thank you so much. Bye, Joshua. So good to see you again. Check out the whole song and highly recommend people check out Joshua Hill's work. Yeah, yeah. bless animism. Thank you all. Um, again, if there's any questions, I'm really appreciating all your comments. I'm just so happy to be able to have this space with all of you and to share about this work and to give you all detailed images. I'm just going to do that a little bit more just because I'm so glad that we could see it through this lens and to know that I'm actually physically in this gallery space right now. I have a question coming in from Esther from Berlin. Thank you, Dana, for the love. Oh, that's such a good question. Yeah, you know, it. yeah, it, that's a really good question. I think I'm someone who like, I enjoy translating or moving between digital and analog spaces. And I feel like I've been a digital witch for a long time and creating a lot of digital artwork. But it's felt really exciting to be able to move more into the analog. And that was a big reason why I wanted to do an installation because I initially, you know, wasn't here. I was in, in another state. And when I knew that I was going to be back, you know, on the West Coast, back near Berkeley, I was like, I need to install something. I want to create something with my hands. And that's why I ended up creating this sculpture here that, you know, is very ad hoc <laughs> and um, expresses some of the digital practice, some of the digital process. But it was, I would say, really, really exciting to play with my hands. And I'll show a little bit of details here. I didn't know if this would work. I had this as an idea, but I clipped all this yarn here. And yarn is a sacred um, medium that is used by my people, the Bidarica or Bidaritari. And so I wanted to work with yarn and kind of think about yarn yeah, and definitely feel like it is raw. Um, and I use copper tubing, and these are black lava rocks here. And I put a tarp. So I wanted, yeah, to kind of create an ad hoc space or a space that also resembled gardening or construction to show process happening. And to also show that, like, you know, this is something that you know, it was meant to pop up here and maybe it's not meant to be here very long, um, that it's easily collapsible. And so kind of thinking about what it means to be on the run or having to constantly move. And I think that was definitely reflecting the fact that I was moving and that my life was kind of shifting. Yeah, so I'll show this yarn here too. Yeah, and you can probably see behind this, I have a blue LED light that's shining the space. And this is directly in front of the spray painted mural here. It has direct light on it, but this one's being lit up by a blue LED light in the back. Yeah, definitely. Definitely rerouting, creating in a new space. 
And also trying new things out as an artist, thinking about form and material and what it means to create with material. And so I'm really excited to be moving more into materiality and to be thinking more about sculptural work, uh, making things in a lot, along with my digital pieces, my video art, my performance work, my social practice work, really incorporating more of the material into my practice. And um, I've actually recently been playing with some clay and some yarn, and I'm really excited for, for with these pieces that I've been working on. They're not ready to show yet, but I'm just really excited to be playing with materials. That just feels really important, especially because I am spending so much of my time um, on the screen. It feels really good to round into materiality. <laughs> I'm sure some of you can definitely relate with that. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Rachel. And yes, thank you. I, yeah, I think play is a big part of my work. I love play. And I think for me, um, this piece was definitely a playful piece. And again, as I said earlier, I'm someone who's had a lot of shame around drawing. So being able to draw and to paint and to play with paint has felt very liberating. A little naughty too, because <laughs> I feel like I'm not supposed to do it. But, you know, when they tell us to not do something, we want to do it even more <laughs> many times. So, yes, um, as many of you know, I love encouraging people to also play and to try things out. And so really turning that onto myself and being like, what are some things, Edgar, that you're still afraid to do or that you're still afraid to see as your art practice? And also trying to demystify this process and to show people process and to say, yes, I'm an artist in process. You could see some of my process and my product too. That they could all be together. I'm really inspired um, last semester by the work of art the artist Patty Chang. If people know who the artist Patty Chang is, I highly recommend you check out her artwork. But she's someone who really shared a lot about kind of acknowledging that there are projects that you work on and sometimes they don't have a home, but sometimes they can live and want to attach to other pieces. And so I was really inspired by that. And allowed myself to work on a lot of different things and not everything made it up into this installation. But that was the fun part of it, of just letting myself work on a lot of stuff and then having it all come together. And also, of course, inviting people to play with me <laughs> and to collaborate with me as well. Yes, naughty play, do things that are naughty. <laughs> so yeah, there's definitely naughty energy in my drawings, playful energy in my drawings. So glad I get to talk about that with all of you. Yeah, so good to share process, definitely. Okay, I have about another two more minutes here before um, I get kicked off. <laughs> so again, just wanted to say thank you to all of you. This has been so lovely. I'm gonna be uploading this onto my YouTube channel and as well as here onto Instagram. If people wanna watch some other parts of this video, um, so, was so grateful to have Diana Castro come online and share a little bit about herself and about her work. And again, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. So grateful to share. Um, and to have a, a space here where I can be vulnerable and talk about my process. So thank you all so much. So much love. Sending so much love and care from California. Thank you all so much for being here. Speak to you all soon. Bye.